Ripple CEO Brett Gollinghouse. He joins us right now. And you know, David, uh, some say Ripple could be the next Bitcoin. What do you think, Brett? Is that a compliment that Ripple could be the next Bitcoin? Well, I think if we're solving a real problem and it's a, at scale, uh, then I think it's a compliment. I think the most important thing that is going on in crypto is understanding what is real and what is just hype. Uh, some, I think, may look back on Bitcoin and find that it was the Napster of digital assets. What I mean by that is Napster was the first to digitize music and demonstrate, hey, if you digitize music, you can do a lot of cool things with that. But ultimately, they were circumventing trademark laws, they were circumventing royalty payments, and government stepped in and Napster was not successful. But Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, they were very successful. I think what you'll find is that maybe the next generation of digital assets ends up solving some of the original problems that Bitcoin set out to solve. So RippleNet is trying to take on Swift. What's been the traction light? Who's come on board? Well, it's interesting as you step back and look at this. If you and I decided we were going to send $10,000 to California today, the fastest way for us to do it would be to drive to the airport and fly it there. That's a crazy thing to think about when you're in the age of the Internet and you know, we're used to information on demand. When we think about the, the customers that have come on board, it's because we're solving that real problem. We're changing the nature of a payment taking days to settle to California to seconds. So we now have well over 100 customers, ranging from some of the biggest banks in the world to payment providers to the Western Unions and MoneyGrams, Linlin Pay out of China. How it's many how, banks? It's, it's over 100. I actually don't know the exact number now. Uh, we, last time we announced it publicly, we said over 100. Uh, we'll probably announce the next one when we get to over 200. We're signing up more than a bank a week now. The thing is, it's not the number of banks. It's the volume For sure. out there. What kind of volume are you looking at? Well, we've had one that we can talk publicly about is we have a, a one corridor and run by SEB, which is a sweet, one of the first or second largest bank in Sweden, has done over a billion USD equivalent through one corridor. So while on a, the global macro scale, that we're still just getting started. You know, I think we're on mile one of a marathon, but we've crossed that starting line. Like this is real activity in production systems where customers are really benefiting from that. We clearly have a long way to go, and the overall maturity of the digital asset market, I think, has a long way to go. But if we keep going back to let's focus on a real problem and solve a real problem for real customers, I'm really optimistic. You have several products. We talked about the system, RippleNet. You also have a digital token, which is the XRP. How is the XRP doing? Because we saw it surge 1,300%. Right. So XRP actually was the best performing digital asset in 2017. It was up, I think, something like 25,000%. The excitement around digital assets is because I think you're solving a real problem. And I think one of the things you saw happen, particularly last December, is there's understandably concern about regulation and what does that mean for digital assets. From the get-go, Ripple has worked with regulators, and we have worked with regulated institutions like banks, where there isn't regulatory uncertainty. And so we have found that part of the reason why XRP has performed well is because people realize, hey, wait a minute, you know, back to your question, is, is XRP the next Bitcoin? If we work with the system to solve this problem, and we can solve that problem at scale, a problem measured in the trillions of dollars then there's a lot of opportunity to create value in XRP. But how can there be clarity on regulation when different currents, different countries are adopting different strategies when it comes to regulation? And the other thing as well is volatility. I mean, why use a cryptocurrency when it's so volatile right now? Yeah. So it, it, look, it's a really important question. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I've kind of jokingly suggested that when people talk about regulatory uncertainty, it's often people because they don't like the regulation. It's, they're not actually regulatory uncertainty. If you think about the a XRP transaction from one regulated financial institution, a bank or a payment provider, they're doing a K, what's called a KYC check, which references know your customer. There's a, a global regulatory framework around KYC. That's at the both endpoints of an XRP transaction, into and out of. So I think the regulatory certainty actually is much better than people realize. It's just educating banks, regulators about how it actually works. Now, the volatility point is also a good one. You know, XRP has clearly been volatile, as all digital assets have been. The nature of how an XRP transaction works, though, it's a thousand times faster than Bitcoin. So the volatility risk you're taking around XRP is only for three seconds. So the volatility risk ends up being very, 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 very small because it's so, so fast. For XRP, you've been looking at banks. If you take a longer term period, who else are you targeting for XRP? What would make sense? Well, I think any payment provider, you know, we're really trying to solve that cross-border 
payment transaction. So if you're going, you know, we you know, talked earlier about uh, the U.S. dollar to the Mexican peso. It's one of the corridors we have live with XRP today. You can hold a U.S. dollar, sell that dollar, and buy XRP. In three seconds, you can move that XRP to Mexico and then sell the XRP and buy the Mexican peso. Whether you're a bank, a payment provider, eventually even corporates can take advantage of a dramatic decrease in cost and a dramatic increase in speed in how those transactions work. All right, Brad, we have to live it there. The first mile in a marathon, Brad Gullinghouse, CEO of Ripple.